Father Dave, the assisting priest here at Christ Episcopal Church and Temple. This is an invitation for you to consider joining us on Sunday mornings for the adult formation class. Studying this book, it's called The Holy Longing, and this is also the same book that we're going to use for our small groups during Lent. So this is a great book for us to use for our spiritual formation, and I would love to have you join us either on Sunday morning or in the small groups or both, because we do t tackle this information from a slightly different angle in each place. So I wanna just get you caught up in case you haven't been to um, any of the three prior weeks, and we'll just talk about what um, we've covered so that when you come in, you'll have an idea and you don't feel like you've come in on the middle of a movie and you've missed the first part. Um, the first chapter that we looked at was just his definition of what is spirituality. Very briefly, his definition of spirituality is just so wonderful because he says it's not about some special esoteric people that are called out of something. It's actually spirituality, something everyone has. And he says it's this driving force that uh, the Greeks called eros. And it's that force that is within every human being to want to expand, to grow, to develop, and to unite. So we all have this energy that's going on. And he says that really your spirituality is not whether you have the energy, it's what you do with it. And he says just there are three ways we can deal with it. Some are good, one's not so good. But we can get really focused and become like a saint like Mother Teresa or we can uh, live a more balanced life. And he uses Princess Diana as his example there where she had this spiritual life, but she was also a person who raised a family and she had her uh, work in the world. So most of us are in that category. And then he uses as the um, person to not follow example, and that would be, he uses Janis Joplin, who I personally think was a great musician. And she had this powerful eros and passion, but she did have a difficulty saying no to things. and so. She, he uses her as an example, dissipating this energy, and it doesn't really come together into something that's important. The second chapter that we um, focused on, this is actually not chapter two, we skipped ahead to chapter three, and we talked about the non-negotiable elements of what Christian spirituality is. And he said, you know, basically it's, it's four things. Um, do you have a private prayer life and morality? Do you belong to a faith group that is supportively challenging that you organize together with the church? And are you out in the world for social justice? But then he adds this fourth thing on because he knows that people can get really rigid in any one of those three areas. And he says, and that's not following Christ. He says, you gotta have a mellow heart. And I've replaced that word with the word compassion. That if we're compassionate in our private prayer and our scripture reading, our own devotionals, and we don't judge other people who don't do it the same way. If we're compassionate, then that's following Christ. In our church, are we compassionate with each other and with visitors? And then as we go out into the world, are we compassionate with those who disagree with us? Um, so it's really important that that chapter was so, that set the stage to then move into the chapter that uh, is number four, um, and it's on I'll read the title, Christ as a Basis for Christian Spirituality. And as we look at that, we begin to see that, um, that Christ in the incarnation is so different for us in our spirituality than anything we could have ever imagined. And this is where he really develops the idea that spirituality is not something that's we consider airy-fairy, woo-woo out there, esoteric, but this is something that's reality-based, it's in the body. And he begins to look at, well, what, how is the body of Christ present here for people to see and to touch and to hear? And he says, well, it's, Christ shows up in three ways. Shows up in the body of Christ, the church, and, uh, and shows up in the Eucharist, and he shows up in the stranger out in the world, and he also shows up, Christ shows up in us. So incarnation is the basis that then sets the stage for the rest of this book that we're going to be looking at in the next few weeks. So if you come uh, in the next two weeks, you'll get a good idea of what real Christian spirituality looks like.